Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the paste review. So that is embossing and glitter and shimmer and texture. So we're going to be looking at all of these things. I am going to try to keep this video as organized as I possibly can, but there is a lot of information to go over. As you can see from the time on this video, we're looking at 40 minutes. So I will try to put up some time marks here that could be helpful for you. And maybe you want to jump ahead to areas of interest and maybe just check out certain parts of the video. I have broken it up into an overview at first and then we will break them down into glitter, uh, shimmery and texture and then end it out with some white embossing paste that you could alter, uh, hopefully alter to fit your needs. So hopefully this is helpful for you and answer some of those questions. If it doesn't or if I'm missing some questions, go ahead and write them down in the comment section and I'll be sure to help the best I can. Thanks so much. But I'm going to start with talking about um, some of the stencils I'm going to be using for our test today. So I have, um, this one's from the Crafters Workshop. It's like a kind of like peppermint type spin uh, pinwheel kind of thing. We have a um, snowbank. This one is from Newton's Nook. This one's Newton's Nook. And then this one's from Echo Park. Uh, this is just a like a cheap one that I picked up. I don't even remember where. So I don't know, but it's a star one. Uh, so they're all pretty comparable in material. Um, I think these two are a little bit thicker because they have more stencil to work with. Um, and so, but they're all pretty much very similar to one another. I also have some soapy water right here to dip my stencils in and then a clean bucket next to it with some paper towels to help me the dry, with the drying process a little bit faster. So we are going to talk about embossing pastes, glitter pastes, all the pastes today. <laughs> So let's go over some of the things that we're going to discuss. Now we're going to look at some of the ones that we're going to test out. I'm going to try to group them by similarity while we're testing them. So it makes the process a little bit easier and less all over the place. But as you can see um, right here, I'm just going to talk about them real quick. So feel free to skip this part. Um, but I am just going to go over what I have here. So I have TCW Crafters Workshop White Pearl Modeling Paste. We have um, Folk Art Texture Paint. Faber-Castell Glass Bee Glitter Gel, Snowflake Paste from Finnebear, uh, Deco Arts Glistening Snow Tech, Dreamweaver Stencils Pearlescent Embossing Paste, TCW Light and Fluffy Modeling Paste, Cosmic Shimmer Crackle Paste, Modeling Cream from Viva, Bow Bunny uh, Glitter Paste in two different colors and some more like pearlescent, Nouveau Glimmer Paste, Nouveau Glacier Paste, White Pearl Modeling Paste, Deco Foil Transfer Gel, as well as Metallic Gel, Metallics Gel, Texture Paste from Ranger, um, Nouveau Expanding Mousse and Embellishment Mousse, Gina K Glitz Glitter Gel, Martha Stewart Sugar Cube, um, it's like a glitter paste, Ulta New Embossing Paste, and then this Mama Jar from Handy Art. This is Acrylic Medium Modeling Paste. So we are going to talk about and go over all of those. Okay, so we're going to test out um, some features of these. So what are we looking at when we're testing? So, Okay, so I've broken them up into their categories as best I could. But um, we're going to take a look at some of the um, different textures. So I got a lot of questions on is there a, what's the difference between Nouveau Glacier Paste and Nouveau Glimmer Paste. Um, so we're going to look at that real quick. Oh, this one's almost empty. Well, look at me using up my supplies. <laughs> I have my glimmer paste here, or yeah, this is the glimmer paste. Okay. And this is the glacier paste. So right off the bat, you can see that the glimmer is, um, much grainier with the glitter inside. And this is much smoother. This one, the glacier paste has a mica in it which is almost not, I'm going to touch it. So it's almost like, let me feel that one. Glad I have my water right next to me. And then I'm going to see about this one right here. Yeah, this is much grainier on the uh, glimmer paste. So that's the difference between the two of them. One is more glittery and grainy and the glacier paste is um, smoother 
but still shimmery. It's kind of like a, the right in between a glitter look and a pearlescent. It would kind of be like the center line of that. Um, so that is the glacier paste. And I'm going to put the glacier paste in my pearlescent group so we can take a look at that. Okay. One thing I'm going to mention here is the application tool. So I'm going to try one paste with all four, one, two, yeah, four different application tools. And then I'm going to tell you what my thoughts are on that. But that's not to say that these tools aren't better for certain other pastes. It's just that I can't test every paste with every tool. <laughs> that's absurd and I don't have that kind of time. I wish I did. But I'm going to just test one paste with that just to kind of let you know of that one kind of paste. How do I feel about it? So yes, you see a card here, which is like a credit card. It's a Metro card. Um, but listen, if you don't want to buy these things, we're going to see how this card works. Yes, we are. I'm also going to use my plastic palette knife that I've been using for a while. I have this rubber one right here. This is, I think it's Brea Reese actually. And then I have some palette, some metal palette knives, which I've heard good things about. So yeah, so that's one thing we're going to be testing. Um, it, just FYI, I decided to use the majority of watercolor cardstock. So I just went in my stash and pulled out some backgrounds that I made. And then also if it's a dark color that I don't want to put on one of these, I'm going to use regular cards, uh, watercolor paper. And this is Arteza. So that's just some housekeeping things. I also went over and sprayed all of my stencils with pixie dust spray, which is this right here, just to make the process go a lot faster. So I think that'll help. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll grab up, I'm going to test out, um, the snow. I'm going to do the snow one from, uh, I forget which one this is from already, but you guys know, cause I told you in the beginning. <laughs> So I'm just going to place it over here and I'm going to use my glitter uh, cardstock so, or my glitter paste first. It, um, I mean, they're all glitter. So let's see, how can I do this the fairest way? So we have four backgrounds. I have this same stencil I'm going to use on all of them and we're going to see how it works. So I'm going to start with my metal applicator. Um, and that's going to be the first focus of this is just looking at the applicator so I can tell you what my thoughts are. Okay, so I'm going to grab out some Nuvo Glimmer Paste and I'm going to spread it out. On this background, I am using... I'm probably going to speed up a lot when it comes to this video because there's just so much information here. So I'm going to try to go through it as succinctly as possible. Now, this is what I was talking about. I'm working on a cardstock, but this is so old and so dried that I'm good because it's not tinted at all with color. So you want to scrape off the excess of your stencil. If it was tinted with color, I would not be putting it back into this jar. So I'm going to pull this off. And we're going to get this look right here. And when you're stenciling with embossing, if you're not going to cut down the edges, it's good to kind of scrape off the sides so you don't have any of that laying over. All right. So that went on beautifully. Uh, it is grainy, so it's not as smooth like um, room temperature butter or something like that. But it is a little bit grainy, so you just want to be aware of that. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. So we're going to test the next one with the plastic applicator. I feel like this plastic applicator was much easier to use. Um, this is not a perfect science, everybody. So if you have an applicator that you love, keep going with it. I'm just letting you know in case you were curious as part of the process of this is how do I feel about the applicators. So I feel like that was faster and smoother. Um, so there's that. But at the same time, I did have a little bit of dry embossing on the other one. So it might have made it a little bit more difficult. But so far, so good. I like the plastic one as well. All right. We're going to move into the Brea Reese um, applicator. And I honestly, I'm not sure which side I'm supposed to use. 
So if I'm using the wrong side, go ahead and correct me below. Um, takes a village to raise a crafter. And then I'm now how am I going to grab this in here? That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to have to have an applicator to help me out. So I guess I'll do that. Put this down there. And then it seems to me to make sense that you'd use the flat side. So I'm going to do that. Oh, it, it gives good coverage all at once. I will tell you that. That's good. So it's kind of fast. And then you can kind of pick it up like that. No, oh, that's good. I like it. I'm a fan. And then we have that finished one. Okay, and then we're going to do our last one with a, you're in a pinch, you don't have an applicator, you don't want an applicator, but you got a whole lot of credit cards, or in this case, Metro cards, <laughs> that you want to use up, or old gift cards. So I'm going to take this off of here, and I'm going to see about applying it. So I'm going to need... Okay, I need a little bit more help, so I'm going to put some more on here. Okay, does it work? Yes, it does. It absolutely does work. So you don't need any span any spancy. <laughs> you don't need any fancy tools, which is really nice. Um, I like it when it, the oh, that's tinted. Get out of there. I like it when the, the uh, results are in that you can actually save money in this process. There's our finished one on there. Super fun. Okay, so now we've tried out the glitter paste or the Glimmer Nouveau paste. Um, it's grainy. It's nice. It's pretty. It's beautiful. Uh, it's all the good things. So we're going to move on to test out the other kinds. I should probably tell you if I didn't just close that out with those uh, application tools, I think that they all work comparably. So um, if you have a favorite application tool, let us know and why, because uh, there's probably some attributes of it that I'm overlooking. So a different couple different brands here for glitter paste. Uh, we have Nuvo, Gina K, Faber-Castell, uh, Bow Bunny, and Martha Stewart. So I got a lot of good... Um, uh, advice to check out Michaels was selling Martha Stewart's. I'm not going to focus too much on price throughout this video. First thing I want to look at is looking at it up close. Um, one thing you want to be careful when you are doing any of this, using any of these light colors over distress oxide or ink blended panels is if you wipe this over your cardstock and then wipe it back into your um, jar, you might cross contaminate with color. So that's one thing that I've learned through my time. And this is how I'm going to show you what happens when you do that. This is cosmic shimmer sparkle paste. And this was this color and it is now this color. <laughs> so it's pink. Um, yeah. So you just want to be careful with that. Um, when you are, so now I just keep it as a pink embossing glitter paste. Um, so yes. All right. Moving on. Um, we have different sizes that you can purchase your glitter gel in. So this one right here, find the ounces. This is 1.7 fluid ounces. This is 2.3. Um, this one is pretty large actually. Does it say on here? It might say it online, but that's a lot of paste. Uh, the bow bunny paste is 50 milliliters. Uh, it doesn't say ounces on this one. So versus this is 50 milliliters. So it's the same size as the the Nuvo. And then this one for the Martha Stewart is uh, 1.5 ounces, 44.3 milliliter, milliliters. So that is the sizes. And so let's see how they go on to our projects because I want to see how smooth they are. Okay, next thing we're going to do is look at the uh, gl glitz g glitter gel. I'll oh, say that 10 times fast. Glitz Glitter Gel from Gina K. And I'm going to place this down. So far, I'm liking the Pixie Spray because I feel like it makes my life easier. I don't have to um, tape everything down. Okay, so we have our Glitz Glitter Gel. I'm going to go right on white paper with this because I want to see how much coverage I get uh, in not using the same color cardstock underneath. So that's important to me and my curiosity. 
So I'm going back and forth on the Glitz Glitter Gel. And you just want to spread it out and then it'll fill in those gaps. You just want to make sure that you're doing that. Kind of spread it and then pick it up that way instead of getting consistently more. It's, it's compiling on your applicator. And so you can just kind of grab it from there. Okay. Good. So I am going to be able to scrape this and take some excess. What I like about this gel so far is it seems to be cleaning up kind of nice. So that's, I'm a fan of that. It's grainy, just like the other glitter gel. So I think that's probably an attribute we're not going to be able to escape with glitter gel because it has glitter in it. So this is the result of our glitter gel. Loving that. So I'm going to go right into the Martha Stewart one with the same stencil so we can see what we're working with uh, for that. And before I do that, in fairness, we need to get rid of the product that's on here. All right, let's move into our Martha Stewart. Now, from the looks of it, I can see that the Gina K looks a little bit more glittery. Um, the Martha Stewart looks smoother with glitter in it, almost like a mica pearlescent. All right, it goes, it's very thin, very thin. In fact, I can wipe it off my applicator here. So it's a thin type of, all right. Um, yeah, I notice a, a huge difference in the, um, in the thickness of this. So this is hard. This kind of reminds me of the glacier paste, actually. This kind of, this kind of really, um, melted butter type feel. I know I keep referencing butter, but it really is the best way to explain it if you're not in the craft room with me right now doing this. So, um... I, I definitely see a difference in, in that. And by the way, these comparisons are not saying one's better than the other. I just want to make that clear. It's just different. And, and I want to try to help answer some of these questions of what's the difference. I already have 10 bottles of Gina K. Do I need to have that? Cause it's going to give me a different result. Well, I don't know. That's what this is all about. <laughs> so I can't answer that question yet, but Let's take a look at this. Okay, application is really good. Goes on just as well. And if I'm looking at them up close, I would say they are so super similar, these two. They're, this one does have more, Gina K does have much more of a glitter accent to it than the Martha Stewart. Definitely. I can definitely see more glitter in the Gina K. And I don't know if the video is going to pick that up, but I'm here to tell you it's a fact, Jack. So if you're going for glitter, I would say then the Gina K is probably a good one for that. I'm going to move on to a black card stock here, changing it up a little bit because I want to do this fun um, web. And I'm going to go for the glass bead fabric Castell. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to dry clear, but I'm still going to give it a go. We'll see. All right. So this is, um, it says it's called glass, glass bead glitter gel. So it's going to be grainy. In fact, there are probably beads in there. So it's very, it's definitely very grainy. Um, it's not going on as smooth, but I am working with a different stencil. So let's give that its fairness. I know some of you might be thinking it probably is the fairest review to use the same um, stencil throughout, but if I can ask for grace in that, I didn't want a, a five million of the same background. I wanted to at least try to get something out of the cards, the backgrounds that I'm going to make. So that's why I opted to change up the stencils, just in case you're curious. Okay, so that dries pretty white. Um, I find this very interesting. Because I'm going to see how it dries. Because right now, all I see is white with little beads in there. And a tiny bit of glitter. I'm not convinced I see a lot of glitter in there. I feel like that was a whole lot of work for not a lot of result. Just my opinion. We will see how it dries. Because I think that's going to help me decide a little bit better. A little bit more fairly. The last one that I'm going to test out is going to be 
the Bow Bunny, and this is going to be in gold. I also have Bow Bunny in this beautiful pink color. Look how pretty this is. Oh, it's just gorgeous. This one is called Blush. So pretty. But I'm going to test out the gold because I have it opened. And I like the texture of this. It's very, th it's thin, but not too thin. And um, I, I've always really liked Bow Bunny. This is one of my favorite glim like embossing pastes to use. I just feel like it's, um, it just goes on really nice. And it gives a really good result. I like this. It's comparable to the Nouveau Glimmer Paste, if, if I can compare it. Um, and in texture, it's a little bit thinner than the Nouveau Glimmer Paste, but in texture. And then you can see the result here is super pretty. So I'm loving, I really like Bow Bunny. It's one of my faves. Okay, I'm back and it's been 45 minutes. So we are going to see how these dried after 45 minutes because I'm curious how long because that was one of the things I wanted to see. So the Bow Bunny dried completely. So that's dried. Boy, that's pretty. Um, okay, we have the Gina K right here. That's dried. So that's nice. 45 minutes. The Martha Stewart is not dried. That is not dried. Nope. Okay. And the this is the Nouveau Glimmer Paste. That's dried. Okay, so new, Nouveau dried well in 45 minutes. And this is the... Which one was this? This is the Faber-Castell. And it is really wet still. Super wet. Because I'm starting to see like this looks dry and that looks clear. So we're going to leave that probably overnight. So that's very good to know um, the drying time of them. So the fastest of the glitter pastes was the Nouveau, the Bow Bunny, and the Gina K. I wanted to come back to this glitter paste because this is the glitter paste uh, from Fab Fabricastel. And um, I can tell that it's kind of drying with this green hue behind it and it's been like two hours and it's still not dried so just that is a very long time for glitter paste to take in my opinion for drying well i was really surprised with the turn of color that i got i mean this is um, first of all an awesome halloween card <laughs> but i was really surprised um it has a very very green hue so i'd be interested to know if what that would look like on different card stocks. So I'll be playing with that in the future. Okay, so that'll conclude the uh, glitter gel review. Um, it's all I talked about the attributes as I did them, so it's really up to personal preference. And I would definitely, as always, look at your cost comparison. I know that the of these, I got these two in store, the Faber-Castell and the Martha Stewart. Um, I'm not sure if you can get these other three in an actual brick and mortar store, uh, but if you can, it's great, and especially using a coupon. So that's definitely something I recommend. But um, also, side note, if you're gonna do a lot of stenciling, highly recommend this whole soapy water, clean water business because it is making this go by so much faster. The next kind that I'm going to look at, I'm going to do a little bit differently because they're textured pastes. So I will show you, um, there, I have a couple here. I have one from Folk Art. Uh, I think I got this a long time ago. It's called Snow White. I have this glistening snow text, um, it's called Glittering Snow. I have this one, which is Crackle Paste from Cosmic Shimmer. And then I have um, Snowflake Paste from Finnebear. And I'm not going to use them with a stencil because I kind of want to see how they dry completely just themselves. So I'm going to just place some of this on here and we're going to see how that dries. So here you can see I'm just putting them down with my metal palette knife and this first one right here is very sandy it's like the best way that I can describe it is it's got a grit to it that's not really com comparable to the others um, I've used this as sand so that's been it's been great because it's a solid white this one right here has a lot of glitter and sh uh, shimmer to it um, kind of crystally 
And then this crackle paste right here, when you put it down, it goes on smooth, but it crackles more and more over time. So you're going to see that here in a minute when I show you full drying time. And then this last one, which is the Finibear, is uh, again, very sparkly, glittery type of texture. Um, for the texture paste, we have, um, this is really pretty much the same from what you saw. Um, you know, there's a lot more crackling in the dried crackle paste now. So just wanted to show that. Of course, it's very thick and heavy, so it's going to warp the paper and the cardstock. Um, I'm even using a pretty thick cardstock, but still, it's very heavy. So... So there's those results. The next topic we're gonna move into is some more shimmery type of pastes. I wanted to see what the difference was between the embellishment mousse uh, Nouveau and the expanding mousse from Nouveau. So they look sort of similar. I chose these two colors. Um, so I'm gonna test these out and I'm gonna use black cardstock again. I'm not gonna use a, no, you know what? I will use a stencil. Let's use a I had to respray my stencil with some of the pixie dust and I'm going to pull this out. This is a brand new jar, by the way. It's very crumbly. If you can see, this is the expanding mousse, very crumbly, um, not as creamy, almost like some sort of cookie dough. I guess that's the best way to say it. Uh, cause it is crumbly. So I'm going to see how this works. One thing I found interesting about this mousse and the other one that I'm going to show you is once you start to work it out on your paper, it smooths out completely, like really soft and smooth finish. Um, so that was very interesting to me. I did not expect that. I thought I was going to have to fight a bunch of crumbling um, material or product onto my paper. So this is after heat setting it. I wanted to see how much it expanded. I've seen people use expanding mousse on their projects and it looks much more puffed up than what I got. So I'm not quite sure why, but um, it was okay. It definitely puffed up a bit and I do like that I could heat set it. So it's encouraged to heat set it, right? Because that's the point of the expanding mousse. So this one right here is the regular embellishment mousse. And again, I got the same exact results. Um, I had a very hard time telling the difference between the two, but have a look. Right there. So very shimmery, very pretty. I'm going to see if I can heat set this because I don't know about you watching this video, but I'm curious. I only, I only heat set half of it because I wanted to see if I can tell a difference. And there's bubbling happening up over here, just like the expanding mousse. And it does dry it. So that's really nice versus here. It's drying, but it's not, see, I smeared it. It's not as dry. Um, so yes, you can heat set the regular mousse as well. Um, so that's kind of nice, but it expands about equal to the expanding mousse. I don't know if you guys have had any luck with that, but it seems that it is probably most of these are able to be heat set. Okay, we're going to continue our testing with some more shimmery um, pastes. So this one's going to be the Dream Weaver, and this is a pearlescent paste. Um, I found that a lot of the pearlescent ones, uh, they, they of course go on very smooth. There's no grit, there's no glitter or anything in that. And I think that's one of the really uh, intriguing and enticing aspects of a shimmer paste uh, because they really, they're not as heavy, I found. Um, I guess the more you put on, the heavier they're going to be for sure. But it's going to be interesting as I put these down and then I show you the dry results in a little bit. Because going down, uh, they all pretty much look as pearlescent as each other. But when things dry, we get a little bit of a different result. Now the metallics here, the deco foil metallics, uh, I loved working with this. I actually used, made a couple cards with this. It's extremely shiny and I love the results. I also um, found that even after a long drying time, there was a tiny bit of tack to it. So, and in certain places, not everywhere. So adding foil to that was awesome. So I got to do that and you get, you know, pieces of foil stuck to the tacky bits. So I do enjoy the deco foil metallics. This is the glacier paste right here. This goes on extremely smooth and wet. I, I That's the best way to say it because you'll see with the drying, this one takes a lot longer to dry. Uh, great color choices in this. Um, 
so that's kind of neat. You get a variety from the Nouveau Glacier paste, um, but let's take a look at the drying here. This has been about an hour of dry time for these shimmery ones. Okay, that is not dried and it is tacky. So there are pieces, you see what I'm doing there? There are pieces not dried on the metallics. But um, right here, this is the uh, Viva that's dried. This is the, that's still tacky and wet in some places, especially the thicker that you put it on. Okay, the Bow Bunny is actually pretty dry even in the thick parts, so that's good. And then the um, Dream Weaver is pretty good all the way around. So let's get a close look at the pearlescent view of those. Okay, now let's talk about the Glacier Paste. This is completely wet. So this is probably going to have to be dried overnight, Glacier Paste. So that's really good to know. Good information to have. And then I um, wanted to show you here on the pearlescent, the Viva pearlescent modeling paste is a lot more pearlescent than the TCW that went it, after it dried. So you can kind of see that sheen and shine right there on the bottom. The next group that we're going to look at is the, I don't know, white, plain white puffy, plain white <laughs> embossing. Um, so n side note, I've opened up all of these and there is just a myriad of fumes coming at me. So, um, yeah, if I start saying funny things, you'll understand why, <laughs> but no, I have my, uh, TCW light and fluffy modeling paste. I have this huge amount here from, uh, handy art. I have my Ranger texture paste. I have the transfer gel and I have all new our white paste, our modeling paste type things. We have deco foil transfer gel, the Ranger texture paste, handy art. Uh, modeling paste, the TCW light and fluffy modeling paste, and the Altenew. So this is what our results are after an hour. So after an hour, the transfers gels are still drying. You can see where it's white still, and you can see where it's clear. So where it's clear is dried, and where it's white is tacky. So it's not quite wet, but it's a lot more tacky, whereas this is smoother, where it looks dried. Okay, so that's... Um, now this one on the Ranger, I'm getting, I'm picking up pieces that are still white, like white and wet. Okay. So that just needs some more drying time there. And then right here, I have my three, um, I would say this Altenew is the starkest white, the most opaque white of the three. Um, the Handy Art and the TCW are slightly little, a little bit faded. But, um, yeah, if I'm looking, I don't know if, you, if that picks it up on the camera, but, but I can notice a, a good difference between the Altenew. So the Altenew seems the most opaque. So let's see if they're dried after an hour. So the Altenew I'm picking up a little bit, but not much. Nope, that's pretty dry. This is very dry. This is the TCW. And this Handy Art is, yep, that's, well, wet in some places if it was really thick. So that's after an hour. So after 12 hours, this is going to be the result for the Ranger and the Transfer Gel because you're getting this clear look. Uh, the intent behind these gels um, is usually to foil, and so that's why uh, we get these results. Take a look and see if we can alter some of these pastes and maybe buy one jar and make it all the things. So we're going to take a look at that next. I had a mishap. The oxides got me. I was shaking up my oxide bottle in this faded jeans. <laughs> and I guess the, there's the default in the cap. There's something wrong with it. So it got me good. This is probably one of the more fun uh, parts of the uh, experimentation that I had. So I pulled out these different products here and I'm adding these different products to the embossing paste. Okay, so in the upper left hand corner, what I'm uh, working right now is a dye ink. The middle is a wa liquid watercolor, the red. On the upper right hand corner, I have a shimmer paste, uh, not a paste, um, like a shimmer uh, liquid. Um, then the lower 
left hand corner is the yellow and that's alcohol inks the middle lower is um right uh, what is it distress oxide and then the bottom right is just glitter so I wanted to see what kind of results we got. Okay, so I'm only going to show you the mixing of the Altenew. Uh, the other ones, I'm just going to show you the end result. But I noticed that um, the Altenew and the TCW were almost identical. They're, they almost had the same exact texture. It's like a fluffy kind of, um, pay, um, what is it called? Icing. That's the word, a fluffy icing. Um, so I got very, very similar results for that. So the only difference I can see between the Altenew and the TCW light and fluffy is um, the drying starkness of the whiteness, which is the Altenew is a little bit more white. Okay, so what did I find here? I found that the Distress Oxide mixed the best to keep the truest color throughout the um, addition of. You also, though, can see that you can alter the colors with other products. And um, this now is the TCW, and these are the results. So very similar to the Altenew. I also found that adding glitter to any of these modeling pastes did not work. Uh, it was just covered up by the paste. I think it would take an exorbitant amount of glitter, uh, maybe a different kind of glitter. So maybe I'm not using the right kind. Um, so that's certainly take that into account. I'm using Martha Stewart fine glitter. Uh, but I just couldn't get the results that I was looking for. So hopefully that helped. You can add a lot to your embossing paste here to alter them up and mix them up. So if you're looking for uh, changing your embossing paste to different colors, I definitely think that you are going to be able to do that. So with these three, uh, as far as price goes, um, I'm sure definitely shop around, but the larger bottle is going to be a less uh, less price overall based on how much you're getting but as I stated before that might not be your thing if you're not going to use it all that much um, so of these three I would recommend if you're not going to if you're just going to use it regular crafting you're not doing like a big old project I would say the Altenew gave me um, the best and most impressive results overall if I'm making you know that's splitting hairs though I'm being honest with you so that will do it for this uh, test out of embossing paste. I am hoping that it was of some use to you. I found a lot of questions of my own were answered throughout this process. So that was uh, fun for me. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate. Comment below and um, I will do my best to get those answered for you. And I will list everything used in the video below in the description as it showed up on the video and different links where you can buy wherever I could find different links if you're interested in a product. Thanks so much for joining me and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.